Hi, Boris. Hi, Sebastian. Good to, good to see you. Good to hear you. Yeah, pleasure to see you again. And uh, thanks once more for playing the legends. Which yeah, it's really all the pleasure is mine. It's really a great event. And uh, I really enjoyed playing against uh, these wonderful players, this tournament. Of course, it was uh, very intensive, very tough to play. I played 37 yeah. games in nine days. But okay, it was really a uh, great experience. I think uh, your performance has really inspired it. Um, and I was inspired by your preparation, like the fact that you kind of chased me regularly who the who the other players are so you can make the perfect prep uh, that that was really yeah, yeah. something I worked on it I worked on it before tournament during the tournament so I am glad my preparation is still on a really good level yeah and then you you must have felt great after the start against Ding yes 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 it was okay you know especially first round it's always uh, you're a bit stressed because uh, I didn't play for quite a long time. So in the first round already, okay, one of the best players. Yeah. Currently one of the best players. So uh, when you know when you start well, you get more confidence. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine. And yeah, also okay, I played a very beautiful combination and completed, yeah, in game three. Really beautiful combination, yeah, but okay. Yeah, it's, it's not uh, so simple. Not so simple to win, yeah. Of no, I mean it. Shows, but I really happy I found the essence of combination. Yeah, no, it was really, really beautiful. And let's jump into the first questions of the of our premium members. So yeah. for for everyone that is uh, watching this and would like to ask a question, all you have to do is go premium on chess24.com/premium, and then go to the article. That you can find on our website, the Q and A with Chess Legend Boris Gelfand, and then put your question into the comment section. But you have to be premium in order to ask your question. Okay, then um, let's start with one that that I found uh, very interesting. It's um, it's inspiring to see you battling and doing well against the younger generation. How do you manage to stay motivated after all these years of playing chess? And um, with age, what changes did you make to your preparation schedule? So when you compare this this prep now that you've done uh, for like the month before the legends versus during your your active time, how what what has what has changed? Well, I try. I'm as motivated. Okay, it's inner motivation. Depends what kind of motivation you have. I have inner motivation. Mm -hmm. So each day, whatever happens, uh, I work on chess and. Uh, I also work a lot on openings. Mm -hmm. uh, recently, okay, I, I don't have so many possibilities to play, so I also was holding uh, quite a number of online camps mm -hmm. for uh, quite advanced students, uh, including some of the best juniors in the world. And uh, so I worked more to prepare material. I worked more on end games and in for middle game on middle games, but also uh, I recently completed two new books, so I worked on end games actually. Uh, well, it really helped me in a game with Peter Leko, where yeah. we, I managed to convert a small advantage and a lot of ideas uh, we are used in the game I will be discussed in uh, major pieces, uh, technical dec decision-making, major mm -hmm. pieces, and game wrote to guess with Jakob Ogard, which should be out soon. Yeah. So I keep on working. And what I what had changed, that during uh, a tournament before the game, I try to rest more rather than to prepare. Mm -hmm. I make uh, try to make all the preparation before the tournament. And during the tournament, I re really need to accumulate as much energy as possible so yeah. I, I really basically rest uh, all, all the day before yeah. and uh, after the games. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, makes makes sense. It's also yeah, something yeah, yeah. I have to. It took some years to understand it because I. Uh, it's normal process. Yeah, you do. Yeah. You are used, but then you see that while you're preparing the openings and critical moment, you don't have energy, so you work on. Uh, 
how to save energy, you work on psychological aspects also, how to control your emotions. Yeah. That's what I was doing recently. Okay, yeah. No, it's, it's something I also hear around Magnus and his preparation. So it's uh, definitely seems to make a lot of sense. Um, yeah. And regarding your books, I also, um, just before the tournament, I saw a, like a post from Anish Giri where he was saying that your, your book is the one that inspired him the most and shaped his game the most. And now he, he's, he's facing you. So that was, uh, yeah, very, very interesting. Yeah, but once also, I don't know, he told he read the book and he, in a few weeks, he won a game against me. If I some knowledge he learned from the book. I don't know <laughs> if he was more trolling me or it was true. <laughs> okay, I had a good position, but okay, he managed to spice things up and he, he told he learned it from my dynamic uh, decision making book. Yeah, okay. Anyway, it's, it's beautiful. I mean, whether it's trolling or not, it's it's a yes. nice nice circle. Yes. Yeah, that leads a bit to the question if there was any player you felt uncomfortable to play and, and why. No, no, no. It was a pleasure to me to play against also opponents. Okay, all the legends and also, okay, maybe Anish and Dean Liren and Jan are still on the way to become legend. Yeah. They made big already uh, achievement in this stage to this direction, but uh, still I feel that the uh, uh, best part of their career still lies uh, ahead. Yeah. But uh, against each of them, I really enjoyed it. It was nice. I really feel, feel very sad that I felt so, you know, motivated to play Magnus. Yeah. And, I okay, it was a um, really horrible day for me. <laughs> I was losing concentration. Okay, first day game didn't go well. And second game, I simply lost concentration. Mm. The blundered. okay, it's really... I feel really sad. I don't know when I'll have next chance to play him. Mm. Because I really was, you know, looking forward for this challenge. Yeah. You can uh, join the FIDE World Corporate Championships. Uh, we have, we have, they, they're just in the process of being announced um, together with FIDE. But uh, every team can can um, have one player that is above uh, 2,500 ELO and is not um, working in the company. Uh, so. Maybe then if Magnus joins, you can face each other at some point. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> I have, uh, you know, my, some friends of mine, they are uh, good club players and they work in one company. Oh, yeah, so yeah. They, yeah. they yeah. try to play an event. I would, it's good you talk, told me I would talk to them maybe okay, yeah. next week. And when we'll know more details, maybe we'll... Uh, you can uh, send me an email via the co-organizer. So it's, oh, it's going to be good, on, very good. on Chess24. I would, I would talk, yeah. I don't know how the structure works because okay, say I'll, I'll I send you know. I'll send you some details. Yes, yes, yes. It's good. It's good. It's it's a good idea. Um, then um, there's a question: If you hadn't been a professional chess player, what uh, job you would have liked to to have done? Uh, astronaut, doctor, mathematician, teacher, musician, or is is chess your life and nothing else? You could not imagine any alternative scenario or parallel universe? No, it's a very good question because, of course, uh, it's interesting uh, to speculate about it. And there was also I the... the to be something the, uh, yeah. uh, to do some, uh, I think, would be some scientist. Mm -hmm. but, which uh, which kind of scientist? Is, like? I want to be more humanitarian way of thinking, mm -hmm. but also I like to work with more, you know, real material like chess because some of the humanitarian science it's basically theoretization in my mm -hmm. view so maybe language structure or something like this yeah. can be a good point also victor korchner you know late victor yeah. korchner told me he was very interested in language structures which word comes to an eye which language yeah. on uh, how it works the okay. whole language tree, how everything comes from, yes. Yes. originally so from, from Sanskrit and so on. Yeah. Yes, we discussed with him, but also I learned uh, uh, recently it would be really interesting. Mm -hmm. It's too late to start, but okay, in theory it would be 
really interesting something like uh, humanitarian, but with a clear, you know, structure and clear results. Yeah, it's it's in today's time it's very interesting because you can often combine it with an artificial intelligence approach. So yes, if you yes, if no, you gives... crack something in language structure, it's more applicable, even though before it might have been purely theoretical. So. Yes, yes, yes. I think this artificial intelligence gives a lot of tools also chess-wise, you know, to answer some questions which were yeah. uh, not answered. Uh, yeah, that's, that as well. Yeah. Type. Yeah. Um, Ennio Morricone, when he died, he, he said, uh, or like, I mean, not when he died, but he, he said that if he hadn't been a, a composer, then uh, he would have been a chess player. Yeah, 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 and he was, I think, a good friend with Judith, a good, a big fan of yeah. Vladimir Kramnik. Yeah. Really big miss, yeah, such a legendary composer and really, uh, you know, big fan of chess, yeah. It's yeah. Really... As someone in our team had still suggested that we should should ask him to compose the the the, the anthem for, for the legends of chess, but the timing. Yeah, was yeah, yeah. Good. It would be, it would be, it would match well. Yeah, but unfortunately, yeah. yeah. If it were one year earlier, probably it would yeah. be still. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you said uh, Rubinstein was one of your role models. Um, in which chess fields uh, do you think you surpass him, and in which fields do you think he's still better than you? Is one of well, the it's questions. very difficult to compare because. Uh, uh, of course, uh, nowadays we have so much knowledge that all grades of the past, they didn't have it. So it's impossible to compare grades of past uh, with a present, present player. Maybe even an average club player possesses more knowledge than okay, mm. Capablanca and Alejain all together. Yeah? Yeah. Rubinstein, what uh, I really admire is his vision that many openings he invented are still mm, well topical one like Meran system uh, against four knights uh, night d4 and uh, all English opening uh, okay now it's top fashion yeah he invented some other like Ninja Indian this E3 and so and also the way he handled the uh, end games and the technical stages inspired and still inspires me but of course also he's uh, in dynamic field he was pretty weak and also his opposition was pretty objectively that time that could be only a number of players who played really strong and modern chess if you look uh, okay tournament was 20 players and uh, some players were really not up to the levels mm. if you compare it from uh, today's perspective. So yeah. it's always very difficult to compare uh, all times with the uh, present time. Yeah. yeah, I understand. Um, a part of one of the questions that I asked earlier um, also refers to what really helps staying at the top. So you have, like, um, I think, uh, um, yeah, even basically 30 years after after you were the number three in the world you played against ding as the number three in the world yeah. and um, and you were you were beating him so what what in your in your education or in your in, in the way that you approach chess helps you stay at that level for this long is it this intrinsic motivation that you talked about earlier is it a, the way in which you have learned chess yourself when you were young what what is the the structure that helps you yeah it's a good question i think there are two basic uh, things one is this is work ethic mm -hmm. and also inner motivation but if you look let's say exactly 30 years ago it was an interzonal tournament in manila i tied first and second with uh, ivanchuk and anand was said and we see 30 years later, we play the Legends of Chess tournament. And uh, okay, for Vichy, it was not the most fortunate tournament, mm -hmm. but okay, we know his level. Yeah. yeah okay. well, one day he can be, everyone can play poorly, but yeah. all of us understand that. Uh, uh, but then the three of us are still 
playing really good chess, so I think it's not coincidental. Yeah. Also, I think that uh, uh, we had a number of strong players in our generation, like him, like even mm. two. Okay, Vladimir Kramnik and uh, let's say Alexei Shirov are a bit younger, and Michael Adams, uh, yeah. other and uh, but okay, they're in top for also for as many almost as many years they joined a little maybe ninety two or ninety three. So all this, you know, uh, we have strong generation and we played so many games against each other and against Karpov, Kasparov. So it gave us so many. Uh, ideas and so much experience that with uh, decent uh, motivation and work ethic it can so useful many young players like it I think this experience yeah, uh, yeah. of really good big games and also uh, what I think uh, uh, yeah yeah I think this yeah mm -hmm. yeah so um, both um, the the historic environment in which you could practice and the the work ethic and inner motivation. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think so. Um, what was the best piece of advice you have ever received yourself? Yes, yeah, there are a few pieces of advice. I, I remember most vividly a piece of advice of Tigran Petrosan, which he gave me. Uh, never make a move without an idea, even in a blitz game. Mm -hmm. I think, in a way, it's also maybe it influences style. Maybe yeah. also, uh, I, it has some drawbacks that sometimes my game was very heavy, you know, I was hesitating in the moment where I should rely more on my intuition. Mm -hmm. But still, I thought that if such a uh, mm, amazing uh, champion gave me such an advice, it, yeah. it became engraved in my chess mentality. Yeah, and it sh it should help the long term. Yeah, the long term yeah. success the most. Yeah, no? yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I believe so. I believe so. Um, would you rather invent an opening that is named after you or win a tournament? Well, I think that nowadays it's very difficult to invent an opening which will be named after you. It yeah. still may be possible to reinvent, yeah, to play some old system. Yeah, some but some, uh, you know, some opening systems are named after me, like in Knight of Bishop G5, E6, F4, Knight BD7, I think. And also in Grunfeld, Rook B1, it's na named after me and Halifman. So somehow I managed to combine it, yeah. <laughs> but also, it's a, in general, it's a very good question. How important is for you your, your opening and your attitude to opening? And for me, you see it always been important, still important. Mm -hmm. You know, for the last tournament I prepared, and I think in opening I showed some of the interesting ideas and uh, won some nice games yeah. because of them, like the Skramnik, with Ivanchuk, it was already played, but, mm -hmm. you know, very few people knew it. So yeah. still opening preparation is very important for me. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. Um, There's a question that has been asked to multiple uh, of the participants of the Q&A sessions. Um, and um, Anish Giri and Ding Liren both said no to this. If there was a magic button that would immediately delete all chess engines and prevent their reappearance forever, would you push this button? It's a very good question. It's a very good question. I think, uh, well, it's very hard because also, uh, you know, since ancient appeared, uh, uh, another quality had become more important, an ability to work with them. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you something amazing, uh, some nice story. You know, first engines appeared, I think, end of uh, 80s, beginning of 90s. And I played some tournament or candidate match, and I came with a second. And one strong grandmaster wrote in a magazine, it's surprising that Boris came with a second, while it's already programmed Fritz 2 exists. <laughs> when you can press a button and know an answer. Yeah. When you re read some even books nowadays or interviews of people, especially of all the generation who didn't pick up this, they have this illusion that, okay, you press any button and have a definite answer. Yeah. 
And I also, also want, always want to ask a question. Please tell me which engine and on which depth yeah. should I press so to know a definite answer. So in a way, another um, quality developed. Of course, this engine it taught us uh, a lot of great things about chess. For example, I give you even an example mm -hmm. like this advance of H pawn, this uh, Alpha Zero Lila taught us. Yeah. Magnus yeah. used a lot of time. And yeah, also my it. match with Ding Liren here, uh, he used in game two, and I used in game three, both yeah. with yeah. white. Okay, I managed to trick him, and it, it, it was not that dramatic, but uh, you know, it's a really big uh, yeah. discovery. Big, big, big how change. dangerous is a pawn, advanced age pawn, yeah? Mm -hmm. And some other things, and we are. All of us are still learning, some are quicker, yeah. learning it quicker, some less, but all of us learning and also from other engines we learn. But also without engines, I remember that times, I think our creativity was on higher level. Mm -hmm. I look at some old analysis I did myself or with my seconds or with Vladimir Kramnik, we made some amazing analysis and I checked now with uh, good engines and they were good. And we yeah. invented all these things with our head. And uh, so both things, uh, you know, analyzing with, uh, but also I think also it's one of the reasons of long, longevity of our generation. Mm -hmm. So we are used to analyze without the uh, engine. Yeah. And yeah. it gave us, uh, it, it was more difficult, but uh, it uh, formed some deep understanding of certain things both in the opening middle games and in the end game. It's a, would, you, would you say that it's a deeper, you, you would basically say that it's a deeper un, deeper understanding of chess um, in a world without engines if you put in this, and, and a different skill basically required in the engine world versus the non-engine world? It's different skills. It's a, its yeah. ability to analyze. And nowadays, of course, top players also learned it. But so yeah. still, I feel sometimes, uh, uh, OK, if you look at the strong grandmaster, but still, he looks at the thing superficially. Mm -hmm. I see that he really pressed the button in the opening, looked at the first line, and follows. And when you make a human move in the response, OK, he starts thinking for <laughs> Yeah, now it's different analysis and yeah. the ability to keep this human touch makes a difference for between good analysis and bad analysis. Yeah. You see that the higher the level, the better the quality of analysis is. Basically, engines uh, favor the more creative player nowadays as well. Yeah. The ones who we mentioned, you see Daniel Dubov, uh, yeah. legendary for his analysis, but... Uh, also, yeah, we will see him in the final. Uh, we we'll see the... him in the final in a few days. Some ideas Magnus uses, yeah. some other players. Uh, we see a lot of imagination, a lot of imagination. So when you invent an idea and analyze, you get better results than when you just uh, look at the first line or compare first uh, few lines. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. So maybe I avoided an answer, but I kind of oh, described think... my attitude, yeah. yeah. Very, very good answer, I think. Um, yeah. uh, because we're talking about in a couple of days on, on Friday 14th at 8 o'clock uh, European time, there's a simul with you. Yeah, I just yeah. want to let everybody know that... Um, yeah, 8 o'clock European, yeah, 9 o'clock exactly, yeah. our time, yeah? Yeah. Okay, good, eight, good, good. Yeah, 8 o'clock eight o'clock Central European summer time. Yeah, um, yeah. And um, for those of, of you watching who are interested in playing against Boris, um, please send an email to marketing at chess24.com. And um, when it's set up in our shop system, then we will send you the right link for, for participating in that, in that simul. Yeah. Um, yeah, and just for those that have joined recently, you can ask a question as a premium member just in, this, in our article Q&A with chess legend Boris Gelfand. OK, and I will. Um, I will step by step also mix in some of the new questions that are coming in, such as this one. So, um, yeah. for many years, uh, so thank you for for many years of of top play and wonderful inspiration. Would you ever see yourself as being a contender to challenge Wesley So for the Chess 960 World Championship that he won against Magnus uh, last year? 
It's a very good question. Actually, I never played the uh, Fisher Random. Okay. Uh, wow. Uh, okay, I would be happy to play. But there, I don't think. First of all, I want to make it clear. I don't think it's a really demand. Many people say it's a demand for it because uh, uh, chess is exhausted. There is no creativity in chess and all these things. And we see each day that it's not correct state. Mm -hmm. But chess uh, 960, I think it can be a really interesting game. I think very much depends on the initial setting. Probably of how this 960 part uh, of the position are really interesting and creative and part yeah. uh, which gives white uh, immediately huge advantage. Mm. But of course, why not? Why not? I would be happy to challenge Wesley. Yeah? <laughs> okay, maybe yeah. he played much more. Maybe he's uh, much better in it, but uh, it would be my pleasure to do it. Yeah, okay. Oh. If, if it would be some uh, platform to organize it, I would be glad oh. to play him. Well, we can we player, can certainly yeah. do that. We will ask him, and yeah. Um, yeah, please, the new please. the new play zone has Chess Nine Sixty already excellent. natively excellent. integrated. So excellent. We can we can go? Excellent, cool. excellent idea. Maybe do I'll think... need to practice a bit to at least yeah. to get closer to his level. But okay, everyone okay. starts from scratch. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, certain moment it would be some playable position, so it would be interesting to play against such a wonderful player. Beautiful. But the leader of a younger generation, yeah. Yeah, it was quite inspiring. I, I was there at the final and it was yeah. it was very interesting to see his, his positive attitude also. Yeah, um, yeah, sure. I didn't play actually probably uh, I played him least of any other players. I played I think three games only. Yeah. Okay. I think I played no, three we... classical games, I remember. Uh, and the last one was maybe six years ago. Okay, well, then and, uh, it's time I never for a rematch. Him, played him blitz or rapid actually. I played much, much more with any other player. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, let's let's change that. Um, yeah, yeah. There is a user asking about your trophy display. Um, so. Oh yeah, behind me. Yeah, exactly. Can you yeah, yeah, can yeah. you like? Is there one that you cherish the most, or like, uh, what what does it mean for you each time you enter this room? Yeah, well, actually, it's a, we had a big reconstruction at home to build this room for me, so I have an office, nice. and uh, okay, some really nice trophies. I don't know if I can show you. Okay, it's a must. Maybe I'll bring now and show. Yeah, one sure. Go ahead. Okay, I didn't provoke it. I just sit here permanently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. I it's... didn't provoke it by any time. Yeah, I'll bring someone some trophies. Okay. I think this wow. one is the most memorable. It's World Cup. Yeah. We won in 2009. Beautiful. And when we had to carry it, it's okay. It's, uh, <laughs> basically, with a box, it was 18 kilo. Wow. So it was difficult to bring back yeah. in home, and it's uh, you know it's uh, you know made like a globe and yeah. it's okay. This is uh, very nice. Then. And really, you know, uh, one very beautiful my match with Peter Leko. Oh yeah. It, Hungarian porcelain. Beautiful. Yeah, and the, to honor me because, okay, I'm from Israel, they made a whaling wall here and some Hungarian yeah. uh, historical parts. It's really a piece of art. And here very is, nice. So, also, I think this is very beautiful. Judith Polgar uh, Global Chess Festival. Yeah. It was a Highlander tournament. Really nice. excellent piece of porcelain from Judith. Lovely. Yeah. So quite a quite a few, and really, yeah. you know, when you know I, things are not going well, I look at them <laughs> to get inspired. Yeah. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, Immediately actually, it brings back if the you memories. Look behind, they say, and yeah, I show you. Yeah. This is from Leon in Spain. Yeah. And I think uh, maybe I'm wrong. Uh, but it's an only cathedral, a uh, mm -hmm. Gaudi built outside Barcelona. Oh, wow. 
It's Cathedral yeah. of Leon. Maybe something else, but it's a piece of work of Antonio Gaudi. Beautiful. And it was a wonderful nice. event. I played in this city twice. Yeah, we 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 oft we we show the tournament every year. It's uh, like a also a Chess Twenty Four classic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, stream. it's amazing, and the city is yeah. amazing by itself. So really, you know, piece of Antonio Gaudi replica. Yeah, it's really. Yeah, that's something special. Really, yeah. What's what's the one with that the 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 flame? Sorry, is that flame? Yeah. Oh yeah, it's a flame. It's really uh, yeah, it's memorable one. It it's now tournament in Cannes. Mm -hmm. It's very strong uh, nice. event. Uh, 2002, I tied with Veselin Topalov, huh? but I had better tie break, I think. Yeah. But strong event, really strong nice. event. But it's really one of the most beautiful cup. Yeah. Yeah, it looks, it just struck me, it looks amazing. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I put it back and I think. Uh, very nice. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's a really is, nice uh, collection. So, yeah. I'm fortunate to win quite a number of tournaments. So, yeah. Really um, good, uh, good memory for me. Beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, do you think chess should change? like adding a piece or changing a rule? Is there anything that you think should be changed about the game? No, I don't think. I think uh, we can uh, change some things here. Yeah. Vladimir Kramnik invented this no castle and he, he told me he had six more ideas like this. Yeah. But I believe it's possible. Like also what I said about Fischer Rendo. Mm -hmm. It's possible to play, but I don't think chess is in such a desperate uh, no, definitely situation. Not. Each yeah. day we have a proof that chess is very, you know, alive rich and well, game and a <laughs> lively game. And when we look also, okay, some people say classical chess is dead. But mm. when we look in sub top level events, okay, I don't know, candidates tournament, uh, yeah. Steel, Norway chess, I don't want to forget some big event. Yeah. yeah. St. Louis, okay. Not to, you see how many rich games, okay. Yeah. Maybe in a tournament, two or three games would be, you know, event uh, without big event, yeah, some boring. Okay, statistically, but if you look, so many games played, okay, you can, it depends on your mind. If you pay attention to interesting things, or you pick up something which happened to be not that entertaining, and you yeah. try to, you know, dig there to, to make your case, yeah. Mm -hmm. The same in life, yeah, so many great things happening, and uh, if some, but a lot of people trying to find something what we are, they are not happy with, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's a so question it if... It depends on the attitude of the of, of each, everyone. And one, the, one of my favorite um, um, sayings is like that um, every every book uh, is, is only as good as the person that looks into it, basically. Like, it's so excellent. it's a bit like that. Excellent saying, excellent saying, yeah. Do you recall when a player hit you accidentally with a door at a tournament and knocked your glasses off? Um, someone is thinking it might have been uh, Simon Williams. Uh, he told some humorous story about meeting you, or if 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 that is. Uh, I don't remember. I don't remember. I lost a nice game. Well, he uh, he played a really nice game. I lost to him, Simon Williams, mm -hmm. in a lot European Club Cup. It was a big uh, surprise. I had good position, but you know, I overpressed. I didn't feel a moment where I should play more cautiously, and he won a beautiful game. But I don't remember it happened because someone hit me with a door. Or <laughs> I think because that day I didn't play so good, and Simon played really good chess. I think that was the reason. Yeah. Okay. Um, makes makes sense, of course. Um, what what can somebody do to get better in variant calculation? Um, yeah. One yeah, of our yeah. team members I think asking a, for advice. Yeah. I think it's one of the key questions. And uh, I, I think, first of all, uh, one has to realize one needs it. It's always important. And if someone, someone who asks this question, he's already on the way to become better. <laughs> also, I think one needs to practice regularly. And I do it till now. Before the tournament, I practice. And there are some great books, uh, books of Dvoretsky, book of my co-author, Jakob Ogard. Uh, I like a book of uh, 
Volokitsyn and Grabinsky, quite a number of good books, but if uh, you went through, you know, one of the biggest talent in the world, okay, and asked me what should I, the same question, I gave him the list, and he told me, but I went through all of them. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> who, who was that? Can, can we ask? Sorry? Can we ask who that was? I think it was not Rebecca Abdusator from Uzbekistan. Okay, yeah. I think it was him. Uh, but uh, also some new books appear uh, regularly. Also, I think uh, there are some sites you can practice uh, uh, your tactical vision. But of course, yeah. the better you become, the more uh, preferable to go with more advanced uh, positions. Yeah. But there is uh, no lack of materials. I think in my books, I, I gave a, a list of uh, books I recommended. But also, okay, when you pay attention to it, you look at every game. But also what I can recommend, uh, okay, when you look at the game, let's say Chess 24, there is an option. You can remove engine uh, yeah. assessment and calculation and try to calculate by yourself together with the players. It would really advance you. Because when you look at it and then you try to understand why the line works. Yeah. While if you... Calculate by yourself, looking at the same interface, but just pressing one button to hide the computer assessment. It will uh, develop your own sync of position, and then you can compare your calculation with an engine and what the players uh, uh, found during support. When I was 11, uh, in my native city in Minsk, there were Soviet Union championship. Young Gary Kasparov played, Mikhail Tal played, Yefim Geller played. And I was, uh, uh, each day, I was going there to watch the games. And then Alexander Nikitin, who was a, a coach of Gary Kasparov for a big part of his career, yeah. gave me this advance. He look at the one or two games and write down which lines you calculate and compare to the ones uh, which players play. And nowadays you can compare also with an engine. So yeah. you have, but uh, the key part is to make an effort by yourself. Yeah, makes 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 absolute sense. Um, yeah. Is um, when when we're talking about big talents in the world, um, whom do you see as the the biggest under under sixteen or under seventeen talent? Who, who yeah, it's a good question. You Actually, you know. Because one of the myths that chess has become much younger nowadays in 20, if you are not a challenger, it's time to quit. <laughs> and actually, actually, I made a very interesting, uh, if I have a minute, I may tell it. Yeah. Uh, if you allow Please. me. That uh, somewhere uh, shortly before Corona, I made the, uh, I checked the rating list mm -hmm. and the out of top, uh, 50, there were how many players do you think were uh, younger than 20? Mm, well, I'm, I haven't studied that one. Uh, maybe yeah. five? Yeah, yeah. Well, it depends. I asked some uh, even, uh, you know, by big grandmas. No, two. Uh, oh. uh, Lirasa Ferrucci and Jeffrey Shonk. Yeah. And top 100, four more. Okay. I think a uh, uh, But um, doesn't... Sevian, uh, Maksadlu, Andrei Yesepenko, and Andrei Sarada. Yeah. But uh, okay, some of them are close. Uh, okay, above 2600, some more. And but also has to do with that it takes some time to get invited to the tournaments where you can advance beyond a certain yes. stage. No, 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 no. Okay, time to advance, but also time to become a really good player. Yeah. Because, okay, if you look also, okay, if you look at Magnus. Uh, He was a really strong player at 20, but if we compare him on 30, we can agree that at 30, he's stronger than he's on 20. Yeah. And it applies uh, to everyone. Okay, Fabiano is still didn't reach his peak, and other players, they still didn't reach their peak. Mm -hmm. So, okay, of course, you one has to be really strong to get invited and to have a challenge, but still, okay, 20, it's not a peak of Everyone's career normally. Yeah, that's my point. 
And if you ask uh, someone be under 16, we can uh, see a lot of players uh, who has huge potential. Mm. In India, we have yeah. unlimited number. And I had a, a camp with a microsense camp. We had with Vladimir Kramnik. Mm. I had a online camps with some of them uh, recently. Yeah. And uh, also, uh, another backup to Satorov is 15. Yeah. I had some camps of uh, one camp with Uzbek- Uzbekistan national team, Zarasamaze, really promising guys. Yeah. But I so, think now this uh, Corona time uh, can be really vital for them. The same Andrei Yesipenko. Uh, who vital, is, uh, vital for them because they have a lot of time to study or because uh, the yes. online world also breaks down the barriers. Um, yeah, yeah, no. The, I think to find the proper proportions because some of them maybe would play one minute blitz mm-hmm. and would stay in the same level. Yeah. Some would work uh, hard and uh, g- give good foundation. At certain moment, mm-hmm. Corona would be over, it would be more tournament, just life would... Uh, I mean, some risk. will suddenly have jumped many levels and others will have remained stagnant because yes. they yes. were just addicted yes. instead of studying. Yes, yeah. yes. And also, you know, I think probably we don't know for how long period we are stale, yeah. but it's quite a period, probably yeah. one year or so. Yeah. And also it may take time for chess life to get back to, okay, maybe it would be some tournaments, but less than before and less possibilities. So it would take time. Mm-hmm. Uh, but so once who would make a big uh, foundation now, would overjump them and not overjump maybe some other players who are yeah. uh, already, you know, reached their level and uh, 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 keeping say, keeping this level. So it, I think it's an excellent possibility for a younger player to combine practicing and working. Because of yeah. course, uh, it's stupid not to play at all. Yeah, you li- lose a touch. Yeah. But also, I always say that on the platforms, you can choose your time control. Yeah. So if you play uh, training games, play 15 minutes, play 10 yeah. minutes, play blitz at least, but uh, to play bullet or, you know, half a minute, yeah. okay, you uh, develop habits which are not useful in a, in a normal chess. Yeah. So everyone makes his choice, but... That's a tip I give to some people personally and to some I give in my interviews. Mm-hmm. But I think after uh, Corona would be over and the chess life would resume, we see, we'll see big changes. Yeah. And we see who of these big talents would make big advance and who would have less. Yeah. But also I want to say that I named some, I put some names, but there are more, yeah. Nowadays we see all over the world uh, there are quite a few big, uh, uh, prom- uh, big talents, yeah, who has potential to go to top ten or even higher. Some yeah. of them will make, but not all of them will make. It's always yeah. like, yeah, yeah it's like players. like in any sport, the talent tennis, is yeah, it's a talent is good, it's but yeah, but it has potential. Some succeed, some not, yeah. Yeah. And uh, we'll see, we'll see. It would be interesting to see the situation in one or two years. What's your What's your opinion on um, like books versus online training materials? Like I see, for example, also, for example, your book, Positional Decision Making in Chess. It's also available now on Chessable or already for a while. Um, yeah. So like, do you think this can help people study even faster or is it is it do you prefer that people take a book and uh, the physical chessboard or is it a mix what's what's the the best way to to handle these technologies i think everyone depends on his own uh, um, attitude i think for me personally when i move pieces over the board i understand and remember things better yeah that's yeah, more more senses involved. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Also motoric of the hand. Yeah. Yeah. But also it depends. Probably players who are younger, they don't need it anymore. Mm-hmm. I I cannot say it. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, everyone. But uh, all these books. Okay, it's good. They're available in different formats. Yeah. 
so everyone can uh, some player some people okay let's say let's talk about people who are not professionals they studied maybe when they commute into their offices yeah. Yeah, maybe they... now because of corona is different situation but generally yeah so they have time to uh, use an ipad in the, when they're in a train yeah yeah or things like this yeah yeah and, absolutely uh, there are of course the more possibilities uh, uh, the better it is, but each one has to find uh, what uh, what's better for him. And also, for example, I believe my books, for example, one also needs to make an effort. One also needs to make an effort uh, to learn. If you just read, okay, it would be some effect. But why, when you analyze by yourself and check your ideas, what's that? What we uh, invite with my co-author to do everyone, then the effect would be higher. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it. I mean, the the learning theory just says the more senses you use, the better. And the, like, uh, yeah, human, really, yeah, yeah. Human, so el human element is uh, yeah. another another sense that goes very deep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But you're yeah. right. Like, the more it's available, the better. That's that's for yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah. But of course, the more tools available. Okay. Yeah. There is no point to pretend we are in 19th century and there is only, you know, uh, to use all tools. Yeah, each yeah. tool is good. Yeah, but the master is to use the tool to the better of a person, not to the worse of a person. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Um, there is also the question about your psychological approach when you play top players. Yeah. Uh, do you play the opponent or play the pieces? Yeah, it's an excellent question. It's an excellent question. And basically, I think I play more pieces as a uh, player, but also I take it in consideration, especially when I choose an opening. Yeah. So, I think my problem is that maybe I feel that certain positions, if I don't feel uncomfortable, I don't like to go for them, even if I know that it's also uncomfortable for my opponent. Mm -hmm. I try to get positions which I feel comfortable, even yeah. if it's uh, good for my opponent. So you limit, you limit your own range. My yeah. feelings and my opponent's feelings. But especially when you use opening, of course, uh, it's uh, really a lot of psychology involved. If you have to allow this type of position, if you believe, let's say, your position is good, but this position fits the style of your opponent. Should you go for it or not? Yeah. It's a interesting choice, but if you play a lot of games, you can try different approaches. And also very often, okay, if you play top players, you know them, but if you play, let's say, uh, open tournaments, uh, you don't have enough time to uh, know your opponent uh, well, to learn about him. So yeah. you play according to, you play against the pieces. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah. yeah, also in line with your earlier, um, what you said earlier, that uh, you, you like to have the idea. The idea is, is a bit bigger than the than the person also, than I imagine. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think so. I think so. Um, let me see. Um, do you play an instrument? And if not, which one would you have loved to learn? Yeah, it's a very good question. I would love to learn piano mm -hmm. and probably... Will you still do it? Yeah. When, when I'll retire, I'll do it one day. But uh, yeah. I, I have a... I know a person who lives near to me mm -hmm. who is professor of uh, uh, game theory. Mm -hmm. And certain moment, he just uh, basically gave up and started playing piano. <laughs> he plays really... Okay, he gives a lot of lectures. He's very popular here. Yeah. In this. But okay, I looked at YouTube, but he's how he plays piano, and he's an amateur. Yeah, it's amazing, and hopefully I can do this. I'll be able to learn uh, as well one yeah. day. Nice, that's nice. Um, this is also an interesting one. Uh, if you could take a time machine and offer historical figures to join you for dinner only once, who would you invite to your table, and why? It's a good question. Well, I would invite my late father, yeah. 
Okay. My miss, yeah, who I strongly miss, yeah. It's yeah. A, a definitely first choice. But from historical picture persons, I don't know, because uh, uh, some great uh, artists or like uh, Rembrandt. Yeah. Well, okay, we admire, I admire his masterpieces, so I don't know, Beethoven. But uh, I find difficult to find what we can talk about with him yeah. over here, yeah. Well, he will ask you about the future for sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, who's your favorite to emerge as the winner of the candidates? Sorry? Who, who will win the candidates? Uh, very good question. Uh, impossible to predict because uh, uh, I think the tournament would start a new, it's a new dynamic because, uh, you know, you know, round seven, if I remember, Maxim Vashelagra beat Jan Neponashi. Yeah. So if the tournament would progress, it would give a good momentum for Maxim. Yeah. And bad for Jan. And now yeah. it's all. But also players who are one point behind, it's basically one, two games. Yeah. And okay, I think previous uh, candidates, I think uh, Karakin, uh, you know, always advanced in second half. Fabiana advanced in second half. So second half is always more critical. Yeah. So I think it's totally open. And who do you think would be the most interesting opponent to Magnus? I think each match would be really interesting. Okay. Each yeah. match would be in because each of the players has so different style. So match is always a bottle of styles, in my opinion. Yeah. So when someone nice. has a, and each uh, Magnus is unique, and all of the of the candidate would be unique. So each yeah. match would have its own dynamic, its own momentum, and uh, I hope that okay because of Corona, it's uh, would be all moved that players would have enough time to prepare for the match because match is always interesting if players can develop a really deep strategy. Yeah. The, then it's uh, it will like Fabiano did or uh, so if they'll have enough time to prepare, we'll see a great match. Do you think that any of them held back during the Magnus Carlsen chess tour something that they had prepared for the candidates? Maybe, but I don't see much point because uh, mm. Well, if something special you have, you should uh, you should uh, keep it. Yeah, but yeah. okay, you never know when the candidates would resume, and definitely they would use time to invent something new. Yeah. So if, unless they have some really brilliant novelty, I don't see much sense to keep it. Yeah. yeah. Um, if you were a chess piece, which one would you be and why? I don't know. I, <laughs> I love a. Uh, you know, in Russian, bishop uh, is a uh, same word as elephant, and the elephant is my favorite uh, animal. Okay. So probably yeah. this, you know, a big fan of animals, yeah, of yeah. elephants, of elephants, yeah. Nice, nice. I um, have small collection of elephants at home, and uh, really, I'm big admirer of these uh, amazing animals. And they are beautiful. They're amazing, really amazing. Um, in 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 some of your Sicilian games, uh, you play um, to open the queen side, and often you don't castle. For example, against Anand in two thousand six. Um, do you feel this kind of active play is best against strong such strong players? No, I think it's uh, it doesn't matter against whom you play this time. I think the point is that Sicilian it's very sharp opening, and the importance of each move is very high. So if uh, the position requires you to take action, you should uh, take action and not to you know castle as you 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 spend the move to bring your king to safety. Sometimes you have time for it, sometimes not. Yeah. So. Uh, it's always very concrete when one has to do it and one uh, cannot do it. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, let me see if there's also a very recent question from someone. Yeah. Um, 
in in response to the advice that you that Anand gave you about always having an idea for a move, even in Blitz. Um, oh, Petrosa. This, this, this going, Petrosa. Yeah, yeah. This going back to it. Um, uh, yeah, the user user wrote Anand, but yeah, Petrosian. Um, I feel it is necessary to study endgames before openings to understand the openings and how they form structures. Is there an endgame or pawn structure system or book that you would recommend for positional play? Um, about endgame, probably I would recommend my next two books, which would be out soon. This Jakob wrote them. They really devoted a lot of time and uh, energy into these uh, books. Uh, uh, first analysis we did was in 2014. So in the last four years, we worked intensively. So really, we tried to describe uh, the ideas and methods of to play, how to play endgames. And also in this book, we give a list of other endgame books, which we really think uh, are of high quality. And there yeah. are quite a few, fortunately. And uh, about the uh, pawn structures, I think uh, I cannot name. You know, when I was younger, the book of Ben Larson made a very big impression on me. It was called finally Zoom 001. <laughs> yeah, nowadays, when that, everyone uses Zoom, yeah, that uses, man was ahead of his time. He <laughs> was ahead of his time. But then it was just collection a book of games to certain uh, uh, pawn structures. One can does it, do it nowadays through chess by, by himself. Yeah. But I think it's a good question. It's a good question. Actually, we are planning in the next books of our series to write such a books on the typical openings, let's say, on mm -hmm. Catalan pawn structure, on Sicilian pawn structures. But there is still on the way. I'm sure there are some good books on already exist, but no one springs to mind for the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, one question goes a bit in that direction. Um, um, how is it that from Rubenstein's era to 2000, all GMs played Morphe defense to Rui Lopez and now all play Berlin? Is, is, is that just from, from Alpha Zero and so on? Or is it, did it, was, is that since Kramnik or what, what, what has changed? No, I think it's Kramnik. I yeah. think it's Kramnik. I think uh, many things in chess world, uh, where, you know, especially in openings, Vladimir uh, was very influential. And when he played Sveshnikov, everyone played Sveshnikov. Yeah. When he played Rouser, Rouser was popular. Mm -hmm. But when he started uh, Berlin, okay, he set a fashion for uh, next 20 years, yeah. and maybe more. Yeah, because uh, he, he and it seems at least to the current engine standards that simply he was right. No? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. It's amazing vision. It's yeah. amazing vision of Vladimir. And uh, okay, engines okay, and move three. I don't trust their judgments. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They also proved engines proved that so many openings are playable if you look at them deeply and analyze. But uh, the vision of Vladimir is really incredible and uh, this is one of the things yeah so i uh, attribute it to vladimir mm -hmm. yeah makes sense um here's a question i think you've you've partly answered it already or maybe completely but um uh, any additional words on how you developed your preciseness or accuracy in in th that you how did you start to implement that in your games um here or the, the premium member that asked this, um, saying that he's trying to implement this, but um, not, has not been able to so far. So to be real. Well, everyone has a, you know, each of us has to, you know, advance. And uh, uh, I think uh, if the uh, premium member didn't uh, succeed perfectly he with hard work, he will definitely be able. But also, I think I was always remembered. Uh, I was always in life taught me that no, let's say no one game is finished until it's finished. So even if you have a winning position, if you don't play precisely, if you don't use all your precision, uh, you can easily 
miss a win or even lose a game. Yeah. So life teaches us that uh, one also is psychological thing. Yeah. One has to focus till the end of the game. When the game is over, it's over. But before this, uh, any surprise can pop up. Yeah. And the thing you may think you're winning, but your opponent finds a beautiful idea. So uh, concentration, uh, it's a uh, very vital. And I think it's one of the things which helps uh, precision, not to lose concentration, to keep being focused. Also, in the Legends tournament, okay, with St. Vladimir Kramnik, I was winning a match one and a half half and was totally winning in game three. But I lost concentration for maybe 20 seconds and uh, I lost even uh, this totally winning position. Mm. Yeah. And lately, I lost a match. Yeah. That's... Later. So concentration is a key thing. Do you do anything to develop your or train concentration? Like, do you meditate or like, do you have any advice on that? I try something, but I'm on really amateurish st stage. I do some, uh, I don't know, breathing exercises, especially I did during the tournament. Mm -hmm. or I do some, okay, try to focus on some other exercises, but really, I really regret I didn't uh, do much in the earlier stage of my career. I believe it could help me a lot. And I started yeah. to think about it and focus on it only a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. unfortunately. So if uh, uh, the earlier you start, the better it is. Yeah. I'm thinking uh, about uh, ordering a mindfulness and concentration video series for Chess24 to, to get that yes, for, for all of our members. Yes, it's a vital part of chess. It's a good idea, yeah, because... Okay, so many, you know, so many times players are losing concentration and it uh, yeah. it's, uh, affects the result of the game drastically. Yeah. Um, do you, don't you think that the classical French as played by, by Nepo is yeah. quite an unfavorable opening for black? But Vinik dropped it from his repertoire after Sm Smyslov uh, proved him wrong regarding his claim that seizing space on the queen side was superior to allowing White's initiative on the king side during during their match. Um, what is your opinion on this strategical debate? Do you think the Petrosian system in the in the French could be a viable alternative to play for a world championship match? Well, I do believe that uh, Nepo played it uh, new about all losses of Batlinik, but also, again, all these uh, modern agents uh, convinced him that it's playable. Mm. I don't believe he played it uh, twice in a candidate tournament, just uh, out of uh, curiosity. I'm yeah. definitely, I'm definite that he, yeah. he, he, his analysis convinced him that even if the uh, positional, it can be dangerous. That the concrete aspects and concrete play, uh, uh, allows Black to get a, a playable and good position. And the same applies to other systems nowadays on top level. I think very. Really, one will play something just uh, uh, on general no understanding and on general knowledge. I think all top players nowadays uh, analyzing by themselves with uh, uh, all uh, engines available, especially for such a tournament like candidates and for world championship match. So if Petrosian system someone would analyze and find it's playable, it's likely. If they would analyze and find it unplayable, it wouldn't happen. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, regarding your simul, so just uh, saying it once more, Friday 14th at, at eight o'clock in the evening, um, Central European summertime, um, people are asking, have, have you played simuls regularly in your, in your pro career? And which advice do you have for the challengers? Well, I play time to time. Sometimes it's just a charity event or 
okay, to cheer up some, okay. Uh, I gave recently to survivors of uh, Holocaust and Second World War. Yeah. Here I, somebody, juniors, but sometimes it's really, when you play semi-professional players, it's a uh, challenging. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, some, uh, uh, you know, when I was, Seven or eight? Uh, yeah, it was. Yeah, I was seven. And it was the uh, beginning of 76. And Viktor Korchnoi came to my city, to Minsk, mm -hmm. to give a signal just a uh, few months before he they ran away to Netherlands and later to Switzerland. Yeah. The, you know, the hall was full with the players. And then he gave two signals in my city. One against the young players and one against the club players. And later on, he told me it was the hardest simul in uh, his life. The, the one, did you did you play in it? Did you play in the young I one? Play, I have a game, I have yeah. a game. It's yeah. really, okay, it was normal game. I played Knight of Sicilian and he sacrificed a piece on E6 and won a beautiful yeah. game. But it was so full, I had to play together with my friend. It was oh, wow. not enough space, yeah. Everyone wanted to play him. And what did you do? Did you <laughs> alternate moves or no, did you, you, you debate it? Okay, I have a pictures actually from. Oh, wow. I would love now, to, okay, to see that. Victor, but of me and my friend. Yeah. But also, cool. I think uh, 45 years, 40 something years later, I returned to my native city, to Minsk. Mm -hmm. Uh, under invitation of Belarus Chess Federation, and I gave a simul uh, against the top junior players of the country. And, and it uh, was how, in the National was Museum, and it was a beautiful exhibition of one of my favorite uh, painters. So I thought I would give a simul in one and a half hour or so, <laughs> and uh, then I would uh, go for exhibition. Famous well, last words. <laughs> like, yeah. Four hours. <laughs> and after this, I had no energy, no for exhibition, no for nothing. Just I ate and uh, you know went to re to rest after this. Yeah. Yeah. So we also I play gave a similar member in Stockholm, mm -hmm. in suburb of Stockholm. And okay, some players were later became GMs, and some of them were already maybe around twenty five hundred. Oh, wow. yeah. So it was uh, really some were just participants, just uh, like club players, yeah. but some were a bit above. And some players were advised by strong grandmasters. Mm -hmm. So they were, I, I remember in Geneva, I gave an assignment for four hours. I think, yeah. uh, so some assignments are really tough, but it's always enjoyable. I think uh, I enjoy, always enjoy to give a assignment. To uh, players who, who love to play, who love game. Yeah. I think it makes no uh, point to give a simul. Uh, if I'll give a simul to someone, okay, who just uh, learned to play, mm -hmm. would lose a game in three minutes. Okay, yeah. yeah. For I remember from my childhood, each simul I played against a national master or grandmaster. Yeah. It was a you know such an experience. Yeah. I cherish the memory till now. So looking forward for a great event in oh, fantastic. Uh, 14th. Yeah. And uh, okay, just uh, enjoy your game and uh, think about moves because a uh, person who gives simul have to distract his attention between different games. So you always have a chance. So try to focus and play a good game. Yeah. That my, will be my advice to, uh, uh, to a participant of a simul. Yeah, one of our team members played in the simul um, with Peter Swidler and uh, yeah. said that it was uh, the greatest, the greatest experience of her career so far. Basically, um, yeah, it's great, uh, it's great, it's great. I hope, I really hope someone would say it is the same on fourteenth. Yeah, fantastic. Now this, this is, I mean, this is just uh, the nicest thing anyone could. Here before the simul. Yes, yes, yes. Really, and okay, yeah, we have to remember yes, yes, that all of us are, you know, we are a member of one chess community. So yeah. we have to enjoy chess game, play, you know, fair game, and uh, try to get uh, 
pleasure and experience from this game. Yeah. No, but it's it's so beautiful to hear you say these kind of on the edge of the philosophical uh, about the game. There's also a question in this direction. Like if you if you had to uh, sum up chess and its philosophy in one, two, or three sentences, what what would you say? Well, for me, it's a way for you know self improvement. Mm -hmm. I think chess is an incredibly rich game. Is that uh, you know you can always learn new and new things and still find uh, be surprised time and again. Yeah, new discoveries. But what also makes chess great, in my opinion, is that uh, you know each one can find something which applies to him. Someone uh, like I like to, you know, elucidate the way of self improvement. Let's say Vladimir Kramnik always said that he is like an artist, a painter. Mm -hmm. You know, he tries to create some masterpieces. Yeah. Some players see it as a sport. Yeah, it's yeah. a really competition. You compete on the highest level or at any level you compete. Let's say, even if you play a match with your neighbor, yeah. yeah. You want, you know, to find the best resources inside yourself to do better. Yeah. And uh, that uh, makes uh, what makes chess great, in my opinion. Yeah. It's that everyone who uh, loves chess and who plays chess can find something which suits him. But also one thing, uh, what I also find in general, is that uh, to enjoy chess and to appreciate chess, One needs to make an effort. Yeah. Uh, and maybe that limits our possibilities to become very popular because if someone doesn't put his effort and his, you know, may I say it, soul yeah. to chess, uh, he wouldn't appreciate it. If you look at the game, you know, of, of big tournament, if you think and you, you see how about beautiful ideas, you enjoy it. Yeah. But if you do... Uh, you refuse to think, you wouldn't appreciate it. Yeah. what's beautiful there. Yeah, you would look for something simpler. Yeah, mm. yeah. So there. I think it's also good that it invites people to think. It invites people to create and invites people to uh, learn. And yeah. it thinks that's why we appreciate chess. Very, very beautiful to hear this from you, Boris. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we have we have some more questions, I think. Um, you played the Nutcracker tournament in Moscow yes. a few months ago, and you played against Alexei Sarana and Andre Esipenko. Yeah. Uh, do you think these two promising Russian players will soon be in the top 10 of chess? Can they these young talents, together with others like Alireza, be the ones who will challenge Carlson in a few years? Yeah, it's a good question. Actually, Nutcracker was probably the last uh, tournament we, uh, we played before this uh, COVID. Uh, yeah, it already started in other countries. Uh, and in Russia, it was uh, still okay. Uh, it was on the air. People were, I remember, stressed. But we managed to finish the tournament. And uh, I, both Andre and uh, Alexei are big talents. but. I already answered. They're in the yeah. list of players who has a huge potential yeah. to be in top 10. And they will see how they would be able to progress and how they sp will spend this time. Because, of course, they are, uh, belong to this group of players who may become top 10 players yeah. in the foreseeable future. And everything in their hands. So I wish them good luck. Yeah. Uh -huh. Great. Um, maybe just to come back again to your to one of your points that you made about the popularity of chess and um, uh, kind of what what could limit it. Um, so yeah. I agree that it's much nicer to enjoy it when you've poured your own soul into it. Um, what, what do you think is the best way to bring new players into chess? Like what is it? Um, should, should the broadcast become more technologically innovative to open To open up the, yeah, to, to make people feel more of the intuition, let's say like 
by pointing out some arrows stronger like like a lot of people like this sesse website where you can see the you know the next four strongest move also visualized on the board or is it kind of more experienced camps for kids wherever this gets kind of indoctrinated or or sold uh, at an early age and um, what what's what's your yeah like um words of wisdom for those that are trying to grow the the, the sport or the game and, and everything related to it yeah it's a very good and important question i think at everything first of all visualization yeah and of course nowadays chess in a very privileged situation yeah because we have uh, platforms like uh, let's say chess 24 there's a lot of materials possible on YouTube channels. Mm -hmm. People start to explain. I think uh, uh, also maybe, you know, series of uh, lectures explained beauty of chess, the most beautiful chess games or beautiful studies to, you know, to grasp uh, uh, imagination of uh, young players. Yeah. And also, you know, the more players will play. Let's say I'll tell a story about my city. Yeah. My city, Grandmaster Boris Halterman, he started to, to promote chess into schools with the help of uh, uh, local authorities. And he talks to each uh, school manager. Basically, more than half uh, uh, kindergartens and schools have teachers. And statistically, uh, between five and ten percent of these children uh, get caught, and they then they go to a chess club to you know mm -hmm. to advance. And that's already big stage. And maybe yeah. uh, out of these players, also maybe I don't know, seven percent would would try to uh, play and to would like to study. So we create a big basis. Mm -hmm. And okay, we are. I live in a relatively small city, yeah. but okay, in a, if you look at the whole globe, the more children would start, the more they would stay. Yeah, of course, we can't expect that half of the children would get interested. It's a very big competition. But if let's say even five percent stays, it's great. But then all this uh, in media tools and all this visualization and all these uh, lectures and lessons and uh, you know activity we do today is that let's say top players answer questions how to progress yeah the basically i think chess is developing in the right direction mm -hmm. fortunately there is a, a you know, pretty health atmosphere in chess world no big yeah. scandals which distract uh, uh, players from chess and which took part in the past. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, we have basically, you know, a lot of a uh, absolute majority of people are very positive. Yeah. So I think we are developing, and uh, there are a lot of ideas. Like, of course, all technical tools have to be used to uh, attract younger generation to chess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, that's great. Uh, that was maybe more for myself than for from from our users. But I thank you for it. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I uh, think so. I think so. It's. I think uh, you. Yeah, I think now during especially this uh, pandemic time, yeah, a lot of people also yeah. uh, stay home more, so they have more time. So I think uh, you know better than me uh, how my uh, about uh, you know increase of your. Of as a interest to chess on the side. Yeah, can tell no, it's, I, I it's would a great do. time. I can only speculate, yeah. No, but uh, it's still like you have this more deeper thinking approach that. Uh, yeah, like is... yeah, yeah, but but of course, of course, uh, whatever advances, uh, it's not a reason to stop. Yeah, it's yeah. always a, a big potential. Yeah. yeah. Also, what I enjoy is that okay, commentary is made in so many languages. Yeah, because mm -hmm. we are. Universal chess is universal yeah. language, but still the explanation. If someone gets explanation in his own native language, yeah, it's, yeah this uh, is one of our big investments, I would say, at Chess Twenty Four. Yeah, okay. like, of course, like China, yeah, yeah, okay, changes. Or, okay, 
Spanish, yeah, okay, whole Latin America, yeah, yeah. okay, yeah. yeah. Uh, it uh, really helps. Uh, uh, anyway, it's my it's my view that the uh, internet, you know, changed the world. That the players yeah. in any place on the world has the same, uh, almost the same possibility, yeah. like uh, players in the center of chess world. Yeah, yeah. one uh, can the... look at the same games, get the same le lectures, lessons, uh, play the players against. Yeah. Uh, any point of the world, yeah. We've also, just uh, two weeks ago, we launched our cochess.com platform. It's like a live study platform where you can train with grandmasters one-on-one, -on -one also things like that. Amazing, amazing, That's... amazing. Very good, very good. It's very important. There's um, a question whether you prefer to play elite tournaments or tournaments with mixed players and uh, how do you feel about team tournaments or generally the element of teams in in chess like uh, yeah yeah it's a very good question no definitely prefer to play elite tournaments but unfortunately i'm not invited that often thank you for letting me play but also mixed oh, tournaments are coming. great i enjoy playing like uh, uh, isle of man and uh, gibraltar and aeroflot all this uh, european individual yeah. strong opens okay Okay, I don't enjoy playing, uh, I didn't play much, you know, really open tournaments, yeah. like first five rounds, you play a player, say, who much uh, weakens in you, and the outcome of the tournament is decided in one or two games. Yeah. I don't, uh, I think, uh, okay, it's great this tournament exists, and it's a big demand for them as well, but uh, I personally prefer to play each game, you know, I devote... Yeah. I, yeah, you you oh, give too much in order to play a meaningless game. game so yeah. I don't like you know just uh, I have to focus as equally for each yeah. game. I do much best, but also so good. But team events, I played a lot of team events and I really enjoy. And there is a, a, a club I play for some clubs, and I, I think it's very important to have a good atmosphere in a club. Mm. Yeah. And you know, once I played in a club in Russia, 64, and I was asked by an owner to help to build a team to invite. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy that uh, most of the challengers uh, who played the World Championship match came from our club. Karakin played our club, Fabiano played. Okay, Nepomnyashi played, Mamityarov played, Anish played, Peter uh -huh. played. But uh, we had one important rule. After the game, all of us meet and we talk about chess and disguise games. That time poker was possible, very popular. So yeah. one of the rules were we invite players who enjoy chess more than poker. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And was, I really uh, and I I, was, but uh, also I played now. Last year I played in a club uh, from uh, Czech Republic. Hopefully, after pandemic would go, yeah. I would resume. And also, it's nice when the whole team goes and discuss. The things uh, uh, together, discuss games together. Yeah. I also enjoy yeah. playing for my national team. I don't play anymore because, okay, unfortunately, in chess federations there are such people that, okay, I had to cut any ties, more mm -hmm. or less same time as Magnus did. Yeah. It's really unfortunate that the people who have nothing to do with chess hijack chess and really it's a uh, my dignity doesn't allow me to communicate with them. Yeah. But uh, I enjoyed to play for national team and I, we had some unprecedented success for a small country like we are. Yeah, that's, that's lovely. Um, there's, a, yeah, um, someone is writing, I, I just want to read the whole thing to you. Um, you're certainly a great legend and really a great inspiration to us all with your love for and dedication to the game. In your match with Vishy Anand, um, when did you realize you were losing and what were your emotions and could you have approached the match in particular, um, the last rapid games differently? How would you characterize your own chess style? Yeah, yeah thank you for a nice question and okay, and the nice words and the match with Vishy Anand was really a pinnacle of my career. And I think I realized I'm losing a few moves uh, before I had to agree a draw in the game four. 
And uh, basically, I think that in the rapid uh, part of the match, I played better than Vichy and I was outplaying him. But, uh, you know, game A2, you know, he caught me with a beautiful novelty. But I think I defended excellently and uh, the game was equal. And, you know, mm. probably I had they had too much confidence in that even when in on increment time I'll be able to hold. Mm-hmm. And then I kind of uh, was hesitating what to do is to go to rook against rook and knight, draw an end game or not to go. And it cost me a game and game three I was winning and the lapse of reason prevented me. Also game four I outplayed Vichy and I believe that I'll be able to win it and uh, equalize it as a score, but he defended really well and my technique was not good at that day. So I do believe that uh, my attitude was uh, correct. I could do something else, but probably it would have other drawbacks. It's easy to criticize afterwards, Mm -hmm. but uh, I think it was totally equal match and uh, okay, we should won and uh, congratulated him. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, uh, there's a question also why you used the Sveshnikov um, in in against Anand. Yeah. I think it's a very, was a pretty good choice mm-hmm. because uh, Sveshnikov is a very nowadays it proved that it's really good opening. Magnus played it in his World Championship match, so more or less uh, it's I played it in a match in 2012. So for eight years it becomes one of the top uh, openings played now. And Black is having a good game. And I had idea to play it because also I, f- I felt it has good, uh, uh, you know, reserves. That Black is doing well, but also Black has different possibilities. Against each White's reply, Black has a big choice of the system. So I believe that if uh, uh, my preparation wouldn't uh, work, uh, it would be possible to substitute it with another system. And also, I felt that it would be difficult for Vichy to prepare against it because against each system White would play, Black has a big choice. So during the match, he would have to make an incredible amount of work. Let's say if I play something else, I think uh, uh, he would be able to narrow my choice. But here, he wouldn't be able. And that's what uh, made me choose Sveshnikov uh, in uh, this match. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Um, there's two more really good questions that I would like to ask, and then we're at the end of our time. Um, one is, um, what what got you particularly interested in chess? When What was the first chess book you ever read, or how did you know that you were going to become a professional chess player? Oh, it's fantastic questions. No, actually, the story is that when I was five, my father was, uh, OK, somewhere. He was sent for his job for to do his job in another city. And he bought a chess book somewhere. Uh, it was a book of uh, Yuri Averbach and Mikhail Delin, a trip to a chess kingdom. And I think it was a very influential book for my generation. Sasha Grishuk learned chess from it, uh, Alexander Halefman, Vasily Ivanchuk. If I remember, all of us learned yeah. chess. This is a great book. And we decided with my dad that each day he, we would go through some positions when he'll be back from war. And uh, we, we did it this way. But one day my dad went to, he, to work and I stayed home. I didn't go for kindergarten for some reason. Mm-hmm. I don't remember why. Yeah. And while he was there, I, I went through the whole book. <laughs> <laughs> it was amazing. Yeah. And then, how old were you there? Like I was five. You were still five when you managed the entire book. Yes. And so then, when, we when to, from when did you learn to read? More or less the same time. My grandmother, <laughs> with my grandmother, helped me to learn to read. This time, I stayed with my grandmother when, uh, time to time, when I didn't go for kindergarten, so she I learned to read from her. Yeah. Uh, so I managed. But okay, it was wow. diagram, so I managed. Yeah. yeah. Just, much easier. Oh, but still, like, <laughs> I don't think many people would say that, that the chess book yeah. is much easier than any other book. <laughs> but it was, I was so obsessed. Yeah. And then 
We went to summer vacation with my parents. I just turned six. Yeah. And uh, there on the seashore, some amateurs were playing uh, blitz, you know? Yeah. And the rules were, okay, the one who is winning, he stays. The one who is losing <laughs> has to make a cue. That when you got your first sunburn, just sitting there all day? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was playing the whole vacation. I was playing there. And what was surprising, some of the players were maybe 1900. And oh, they wow. won one or two games in the, okay, in two weeks. Yeah. I can't imagine how I did it. But one of the players who played there was a friend of my father. Yeah. So he told to my dad that, okay, he has to send me to a chess club to a coach and yeah. he has a friend so that's how it started wow. and uh, i decided when i decided to become professional it's a good uh, question and uh, you know when i think when i finished my high school uh, 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 you know i won soviet union junior championship mm -hmm. and i think the size of game i beat vasily Ivanchuk. so we were competent and then he was second Okay, this is the size of game took place not in the last round. It took place now in the middle of the tournament, but at the end I was half a point ahead of him. So after yeah. after this, I thought that I'm good enough to try to pursue my chess career, even so my parents were not very <laughs> confident, but I thought that I'm good enough to succeed. How 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 come your parents still had doubts after what you've done at the age of five? Like uh, today, I, I just feel like in today's time, if 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 a child was demonstrating that, like the parents would throw everything at uh, like out of their lives and focus on the the child's chess career. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, my my parents were very supportive, and uh, you know, there is a great movie, Album Sixty One. Probably some of the uh, premium members saw it. Yeah, it's, uh, you could see it on YouTube about my career, about uh, how my father, it's yeah. a award-winning film. Uh, they won uh, some awards, and uh, the director won some awards, how they supported me through whole career, but they always had an idea that uh, they leave it to me. If I like to do it, they fully supported me, and my mother supports now. My father supported yeah. me the last day he lived. Yeah. My mother supports me till now my grandmother supported it the last day wow. she was alive but uh, they never so nowadays the problem is that uh, very often we see that the parents trying to make their career through the children and this is the worst case scenario yeah we can yeah, also okay. say example of magnus and his father henrik yeah and how henrik was supportive he never pushed him yeah so well, he's, he's really I had great like, the same. yeah I had experienced the same. And I see that many parents nowadays support their children in an incredible way. Yeah. Because uh, what uh, uh, someone in a young age, whatever he tries to achieve, he needs a big support from his parents. Yeah. But unfortunately, uh, time and again, we see that the parents are pushing uh, younger players or trying to make career, trying to make earnings through them. And uh, it's very difficult to find the balance. Yeah. It very much depends, I believe, on the family and on the uh, human qualities of uh, parents. I think... Uh, yeah. uh, well, one... you, also, you, yeah. have to, you have to also have a lot of consciousness and awareness of things to even make this decision consciously to, 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 to not um, burn your child too early. Um, yes, exactly, exactly. And of course, it's a big sacrifice from parent side, but very often parents have to maybe make some adjustment to their careers to help a child. Yeah. And it's very, as, a, as a parent, I know a problem from both sides, yeah? yeah. But I always uh, think that uh, it's, it's, uh, to push things and to put pressure on your child, it's a worth thing one can do but to be yeah. supportive and to help is the best thing you can do must be must be very nice for your children also yeah i hope so i try my best yeah the the last question i would like to ask is um 
in in the legends in the chess 24 legends of chess tournament um you ivancho kramnik anand you often outplayed the opponents but uh, maybe suffered from this online management um do you think that your generation of world chess of world class players um was stronger or is stronger than the current competitors of for, for the world championship or well, how, would I, you, um, how do you see it it's a good question no i think i do believe i outplayed my my problem was that i was losing concentration mm. uh, time and again one game okay with swidler i had a mouse slip okay i already missed an advantage but position was playable i had mouse slip I don't know what happened, probably, but also it connected with loss of concentration. Mm. I believe this is a problem, and the, I don't wouldn't blame that it's a thing that was played online. Mm. It happens also in the offline games. Yeah, it's one of the probably these years. It's one of the problems that, that one has to learn to keep concentration. Mm. I had this. It was not my best quality through my career, and probably, but. This year becomes uh, uh, worse, yeah. But uh, okay, <laughs> I, I'm do, to, doing the best to minimize yeah. it and to learn. Okay, to the best of I can do. And I think we had a great generation, but also the generation who is on top of chess uh, now is very strong. Let's say uh, players who were born in 1990s are four absolute yeah. level players like Magnus. Maxim Vashkela Graf, Nepomish and Karyakin. Yeah. And, uh, I think uh, I don't see it as a competition. I see it as yeah. great that each generation adds something new. And I'm proud that my generation, three players of my generation who played there still uh, play really good chess. And uh, I believe it's my personal view that. Uh, our you know level of play is higher than our result yeah yeah i, I agree but okay uh, but uh chess been... is uh, what what is also wonderful about chess that it's uh, objective if yeah. you lose you lose yeah <laughs> your music competition a lot of subjective factors for example yeah or you're an artist yeah a lot of subjective factors and uh, you depend on the opinion Mm. Here you depend on your on your result. If you are not able to show it, it means that it's how it is. So yeah. also it's a, a lesson uh, and uh, uh, some ideas what what you can think about uh, how to improve uh, further. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much, Boris. I think thank like you, we. Thank you, Sebastian. Thank you, Sebastian. Yeah. And, uh, Thank you for this great event, and uh, we keep on uh, following the uh, last uh, tournaments to, tournament together. It's a uh, forthcoming uh, days. Yeah. Uh, and uh, thank you for all the questions, and uh, good luck to everyone. And uh, uh, looking forward to meet you again. Yeah, me too. Thank you, thank you very much, Boris. Thank, thank you, all the all our premium members, both for supporting everything that we do here, but also for the great questions. It's really been, yeah, it wouldn't, wouldn't be possible without the great questions. So yeah, thank sure, you. Sure, sure. It was a pleasure to answer because it was really deep and interesting questions, and I sincerely hope that uh, my answer had helped. Uh, uh, ones who answered them and ones who uh, listened to the answers uh, uh, to uh, learn something and to uh, improve your chest. I'm definitely sure of it. And like you've said, it's it's up to to each individual how they how much they take from it and what yeah. how far they go with it. But uh, you you've given another platform of wisdom, and I'm really grateful for it. Thank you, Boris. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.